In the news tonight, unstable weather conditions dumped heavy rainfall on the northern section of Barbados. Barbadians consult with officials over education reform. It's off to Dominica for the winner of the CBC Shop and Win competition. And in sports, one of Barbados's top medal prospects in Chelsea Tuak has been eliminated from her event at the Pan Am Games. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. Very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Broom. Thank you for tuning in. In our top story tonight, the skies over the northern section of Barbados darkened during the afternoon and unleashed torrents of rain. So much so that the Met Office issued a flood warning for the area, eventually extending it to the entire island. The deluge flooded areas of northern St. James and Spicetown in St. Peter. Reports indicated that students of the Alexandra School in the heart of Spicetown were sent home early. The Barbados Fire Service was called in to pump the water out of the school and according to sources, the pump at the school kept tripping the breaker. Deputy Director of the Department of Emergency Management, Captain Robert Harewood, toured the area and he gave us this update. The Department of Emergency Management received reports from both the public and our district emergency organizations of incidents of flooding in areas of Jackson, St. Michael, and the family there received water gel stacks, which is in Slimbo, Samai. Reports from Plum Grove and Christ Church, Point Stone, including the Alexander School and Marlins in St. Peter, Weston, Westmoreland, and Walton in St. James, Borders, Dark Hole, and the East Coast for the Sinanji. A team did an assessment of the West Coast as far as flood storm, and during this storm, we found that much of the flood waters had already run off, but there were pockets of pollen and debris, particularly between Walton, going north towards flood storm. This should be a concern for drivers on that set, particularly going into tonight. Um, the area really wishes to reiterate that in the event of flooding process should move immediately to higher ground out of flood waters. Uh, you should not walk through flood waters as only six stages of flowing flood waters could knock a person off their feet. Uh, you should not attempt to drive through flood waters either as vehicles could be swept away in only two feet of moving water. If your vehicle is stopped and rapidly moving water, stay inside the vehicle. If water gets inside the vehicle, you should seek refuge on the roof. Be aware of bridges as stores of water could impact bridges and anyone on them at that time. And please stay in tune with the Barbados Means Lodge Services and the Department of Mercy Miners any further updates. Well, further east in Belle Plain, the bridge leading to the Ermibourne Highway became impassable when water from the river below flooded onto the road. And weather presenter Carrie Ann O'Neill joins us now. Carrie Ann, good evening. Now, has that weather passed or can we expect more uh, into tonight? Good evening to you, Lisa, and good evening, everyone. Well, Lisa, we can expect additional showers and thunderstorms later on tonight. In fact, the Met Office issued a flash flood warning, and that has been extended until 6 in the morning. Now, let's take a look at what exactly happened today. We had convergence along with strong daytime heating, moisture in the atmosphere, and light winds all coming together to maintain very unstable conditions here in Barbados. We experienced cloudy to overcast skies along with moderate to heavy intense showers and thunderstorms here in Barbados. Now over the northwestern areas, they had one to four inches of rainfall. Over the southern areas, one to two inches. Later on tonight, we are expecting cloudy to overcast skies, heavy and intense showers along with the possibility of some thunderstorms. We also have a tropical wave behind this area. As a result, we are expecting additional showers tomorrow. But I'll have uh, more information later on in the weather news. Lisa. Thank you very much, Carrie Ann. Well, Barbadians got an opportunity last night to share their views on education reform. It came during the first in a series of public consultation meetings hosted by the Ministry of Education to shape the Education Transformation Initiative at the Alexandra School. Kish Marsinji's reports. The proposed reforms are intended to create a system where no child is left behind. And according to Minister of Education, Kay McConney, the ministry is working to build on the already good education foundation. 
She says the proposals recently announced come after consultations with key stakeholders. Once you have this document here, the intention is that these are proposals, just proposals at this stage. And we invite you, we truly invite you to engage in a constructive way. Read the proposals, know what is proposed. We encourage you to tell us what you agree with. Tell us those things where you think, I like this, but here is a different way in which you can implement. Consider those and say, okay, this is good, but maybe we need to time it differently. We are really genuinely looking for your feedback. Chief Education Officer Dr. Ramona Archer Bradshaw says children should have authentic experiences in schools. She says it's also important the education system has teachers who can inspire students. To excel and to achieve, to be their best selves. We also want an education system that produces outstanding Barbadian citizens who can do well here in Barbados, but who can also do well anywhere at all in the world. The recommendations put forward were numerous from the audience, which comprise of several educators. The advent of technology and artificial intelligence were also raised. Former principal of the government industrial school, Erwin Leacock, put forward a proposal for consideration to be given to having nursing stations in schools. Chronic asthmatics. You're talking about a life and death situation. There are no nebulizers in schools, nobody trained to use them. If we are talking about reimagining education, that has to be. Because if you're looking at models overseas, a nurse in a school is taken for granted. Nobody is no big thing because it is taken, it is taken for granted. Through the sessions, education officials will collate all suggestions and refine their booklet and document before submitting to cabinet. Kishmo Senjis, CBC News. Veteran educator Romero Lashley says students' reliance on artificial intelligence will have implications for educators. He shared his views on how this can be countered. You have to be able to assimilate and properly digest. You don't get where you get it from, AI or wherever. If you want to make sense, you have to show me that you have assimilated that stuff. So oral examination is something I think should be thought as one of the responses to AI. A senior education official has called attention to deficiencies in school children. Director of the Education Reform Unit, Dr. Idemi Denny, says at times they are not discovered until late in school life. She says interventions are critical in the island's quest to transform Barbadians into global citizens. And by the time the discovery is made, they have fallen further and further behind. The minister at the launch talk about the fact that it was only recognized when she was 11 years old that she had a sight problem. Fortunately for the minister, she was a bright child. But there are children who may not do as well as the minister would have been doing, who when they have a problem like that, you are not going to get them to catch up at all. Dr. Denny added, with the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic, it was recognized officials had to focus on social and emotional learning. We have found that our children are not the considerate, the kind, the persons that we used to be as children. There is a, 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 a something to our children now where many of them don't seem to have any soul. We recognize that we need to focus on social and emotional learning because we have to put that soul back in our children. As government embarks on its education reform quest, the local teachers trade union has been moving to ensure educators sharpen their skills in preparation for that shift. This morning, the Barbados Union of Teachers hosted a professional development workshop at NUPW headquarters. Facilitator Tonya Joseph spoke about the importance of the session and the topics covered.
Today we're going to talk about professional learning communities as an approach to school improvement and teaching and learning. Professional learning communities are strategic approaches to education, data-driven approaches where we look at data first before we look to implement strategies into the classroom. We're looking to improve instructional strategies and instructional approaches and the only way for teachers to be able to improve in those instructional approaches is to rely on the data. What does the data say? What do children need? What do we need? need as educators and then put systems in place to be able to cater to the needs of our students and teachers. The winner of the 2023 CBC Shop and Win promotion has left Barbados for Dominica to attend the World Creole Music Festival. Our camera caught up with Renice Bonnet and her guest Michaela Matthews this morning as they were checking in at the Inter-Caribbean Airways desk at the Cranley Adams International Airport. It's the first time both ladies will be visiting the Nature Isle and they're anticipating what will be in store over these next three days. We're so excited. We've never been to Dominica before, so we're really looking forward to it. <laughs> Any plans for Dominica? I mean, other than attending Creole Festival events, we want to see some waterfalls, we want to take some pictures by the Dominica sign, and just have a good time, take some pictures for Instagram. <laughs> Michaela, how do you feel to be the chosen friend? <laughs> I feel very special and honored that she chose me. I'm excited for my trip to Dominica, and I just can't wait to spend a weekend with her. Well, CBC's marketing specialist Nicole Collins was on hand to assist the ladies. While promising updates from the trip, she thanked everyone who made the promotion a reality. They've had a wonderful time preparing and we, we want you to stay tuned to CBC TV 8 and our social media pages for all of the information, all of the sites and the tours that they will take in. We'll be definitely bringing it to you. What does this mean for CBC? We are always looking for ways to reward our listeners, engage them and celebrating our 60th anniversary. We thought it wonderful, a wonderful idea to bring a shop and win of this nature to our listeners and our viewers. This was a corporate initiative which meant that you took part through radio or television. We want to especially give thanks to our sponsors for participating. We knew that we know that they would have gotten great mileage from this and that is what we're always looking to give to our sponsors, bringing competitions and promotions that give added value. Well, coming up, we'll tell you what the authorities at the Samuel Jackman Prescott Institute are hoping for by next month. Authorities at the Samuel Jackman Prescott Institute of Technology are hoping that before the end of November, the repair work at the Wilde St. Michael Institution will be completed. The SJPI was closed from Monday, October 23rd to conduct repairs. Principal Ian Drakes told the Morning Report since the institute does not work on the same schedule system as other tertiary institutions, their students will not be displaced in any major way. He explained the model which they use. No major shift, and I will say to you, what we have been able to do is we have used the model that we used during the lockdown, whereby theory was done for a period of time, and then you come back in and do your practical. Plus is that our, out of that model, we have also been modeling, for lack of redundancy, we have been modeling a continuous assessment process as against a one-off exam at the end of a semester. We no longer use that system either. Levels of competency in our students on a continuous basis. Mr. Drake says uh, they've kept a handle on external testing, explaining that there are also contingencies in place in the event that timelines are not met. We do have, uh, we use the international standard of if there's a lower percentage of students in attendance, you, you discontinue teaching until the reopening. Contingency for the contingency is that we will have to make next year's semester two longer, which is again the same model that we use for the pandemic because we usually stop in May and we were stopping up to this year, not, not this year, last year, 2021, 2022, we had to stop, our semester didn't stop until June, July. That's the contingency. In other words, we are using the identical model from the lockdown. I'd just like to thank the public for their cooperation and, and the parents and the students for their understanding. 
Eleven educators from primary, secondary, and tertiary institutions across the island are the recipients of the inaugural TIER Award. Conceptualized by the Barbados Union of Teachers, the prize salutes the shining stars in the teaching profession. We have more from Rianne Phillips. The announcement of the first batch of top tier awardees came from executive member of the Barbados Union of Teachers, Sharice Rock. The duty top tier teachers for the year 2023 are as follows. Roman Armstrong, Corrigan Parry, Laron Walcott, St. Leonard's Boys, Fania Joseph, Spray Memorial, Allison Murray, Grantley Adams Memorial, but she is at Erdiston Teachers Training College, Miranda Fergus, Milton Lynch, Cheryl Scott Brewster, St. Silas Primary, Sonia Shepard, Half Moon Fort Primary, Kerry Robinson, Grisette's Primary, Rachel Samuel, St. Christopher Primary, Stephen Kalman, St. George Primary, and Amor Douglas from the Olga Miller Nursery. She also gave the rationale for the tokens. This year, we have conceptualized an award called the Top Tier Teacher. The T-I-E-R stands for a teacher who inspires, encourages, and respects his students, his or her students, and colleagues. And here is what some of the recipients had to say. I just want to say thank you to the union and to the committee who um, recommended me and who selected me for this award. It is truly touching and humbling and I will continue to do my best um, for the children of our country. I am Sonia Shepard, senior teacher at the Half Moon Fort Primary School. This is my 20th, 28th year of teaching and it feels good to be recognized at this time, especially on Teacher Appreciation Day. I truly feel appreciated. So thank you to the Barbados Union of Teachers I am quite humbled, as I said before, and elated. Cheryl Scott Brewster, St. Silas Primary School. I am the language arts coordinator here. I have been teaching here for 17 years. Um, this is indeed an honor to be recognized uh, in this forum, and I continue to. I will continue to do a great job as long as I'm in this profession. While there was a general nomination process, the lucky 11 were chosen by a BUT committee. Rianne Phillips. CBC News. Well, the opportunity to study overseas was in sharp focus during Cup Fest at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center recently. It's a forum where representatives from major study destinations in Canada, the United Kingdom and the U.S. meet students, parents and educators and it's all to fine-tune details and access information from a cross-section of institutions for higher learning. Here's Trevor Thorpe with the details. Representatives from universities from North America, Canada and the United Kingdom answered questions from students preparing for study at Cupfest, the Student Center's official education fair at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center. Director of Legal and Communications, Kimberly Aline Pinder, says it's a unique event with a reach beyond undergraduate studies. Whilst it is an undergrad focus fair, we also do provide pathways for our graduate students right up to a PhD level. Um, the mere fact that we have close to 40 schools, even from as far as Australia, means that we, Barbados, we're providing quality students to go anywhere in the world and to not only go anywhere in the world, but to be successful. So it speaks volumes to the level of education that we have here and the, level, the type of students that we actually move from Barbados to these universities. And the pursuit of higher education is being made easier with financing packages, as Operations Officer Erica Cummins explains. For the PS Digital Smart Card, that is an international card. You're able to use that card both locally and internationally. You can use it for any purchases. It's a Visa card. And as long as you're a student, you can apply for a working as a working student or you can apply with a guarantor. With a guarantor. Business management student Nia Wood is hoping to complete her business management studies in Canada. The reason why I chose business is because I like to I would like to work for myself or maybe at least work for a firm to get experience at first and then be able to branch off into my own and work for myself. Close to 40 universities took part in Cupfest 2023. Trevor Thorpe, CBC News. 
A 78-year-old Guyana-born Barbadian pianist is challenging himself by staging a concert while exposing the public to the classical sounds of a South American guitarist. Frank Fernandez and Peruvian classical guitarist Francisco Moss will be on stage at the Prince Cave Hall on December 6th. It will be the first time Fernandez will be performing for some time and he gave CBC News some insight into the composition of the concert. I am playing Rachmaninoff, I'm playing Mozart, Franz Schubert, a complete piano sonata of Schubert in A major, and I'm playing Bajan music. Kit Spencer, a Barbadian composer, mm -hmm. used to teach at St. Michael's School, I think all his life, all his working life, and um, I'm playing a piece of his. It's the most difficult piece on the program. Peruvian guitarist Francisco Moss, who studied the guitar at the Vincente Emilio Soho Conservatory, has been playing on the hotel circuit since making Barbados his home, and his repertoire will be South American. I'm going to be playing two pieces by um, Lauro, Antonio Lauro, famous Venezuelan composer, and um, Rodrigo Riera. And then also be playing one by a Spanish composer, Albanis. It's, that one is going to be called Granada. Mm. So those are my main pieces. I'll also be playing a study by Paraguayan composer Barrios and um, Agustin Barrios Bangore. Sports Night, brought to you with the compliments of Great Health Works, agents for Omega XL. It's sports time now. Let's head over to the sports studio where Anne-Marie Burke is standing by with the details. Anne-Marie? Good evening, Lisa. Barbados Senior Women's na National Football Team will be looking to go top of Group C in League B on the road to the CONCACAF Women's Gold Cup when they take on Bermuda tomorrow night at the Weldy Turf. Head of the top of the table clash, the Lady Tridents have been going through their paces. CBC's Anmar Goodrich Boys visited a training session and filed this report. Barbados' chances of qualifying for the inaugural CONCACAF W Gold Cup remain in good stead. They have three points from two matches. However, Barbados will move a step closer to the competition with victory against Bermuda here at the Woody Turf on Friday night. The last time the Lady Tridents played at home, they registered a 5-0 victory over St. Vincent and the Grenadines before losing 3-0 away to the Dominican Republic. Their next opponents, however, are Group C leaders Bermuda. But Barbados captain and first choice goalkeeper Camila Burt says her team will not be phased. We have a lot of young players in the team, but I spoke to them as captain, tell them that they are the future of the football, so just come and learn as much as they can from the older players. Um, Bermuda topping the, the, the group, football players on the day, so we're not looking at them as being the top team in the competition, but as any other team, so we will come and we will put in the effort needed. It is pretty much an unchanged squad from the previous match, with centre-half Oleana Bishop recovering from injury and Tanija Moore returning to the 23-member team. Defender Adrian Ford says she's confident of a good result. We want to use the momentum from the St. Vincent and Grandis game. Um, I think that the opponent is a bit more challenging, but seeing as how we held our one against St. Vincent, and we definitely challenged the Dominican Republic, I think that we have a very good chance against Bermuda. Technical director Emerson Boyce is also optimistic. The women are ready. Um, they had a, a great performance last time they were in Barbados. And we want to carry on that momentum now and, and have another great result. Um, I say the players are full of confidence. Um, the last game didn't, quite, didn't go to plan how we want it to go, but that's football. It's all part of learning and they're eager to put that, put that right. So it's going to be an exciting game for us and we're looking forward to the challenge. Kickoff is set for 7 p.m. And more Goodrich Boys. CBC Sports. The Business Report, brought to you with the compliments of Republic Bank. We're the one for you. In the business news, the success of the West India Biscuit Company, or Wibisco, has been attributed to its loyal staff. That's according to Managing Director Lorenzo Roach, who was speaking during a media briefing as the company marks its 113th anniversary. Here's Trevor Thorpe. 
Managing Director Lorenzo Roach says the company is on an upward trajectory as it moves towards its 115th milestone and without flags and fanfare, much attention will be given to team building, new products and giving back to the community in which it serves. We have one or two surprises coming um, in terms of new products and, and we are hoping to launch that very soon. Um, that would build on top of the legacy that we have there. So new product development is also one. Specifically in terms of our anniversary though, um, we, we didn't think that this was an, an opportunity for us to do something just specific for 113, but for us to actually do something that it will be continuous for the next 100 years. And that is how do we build and continue to connect with the communities that we serve. The managing director gave some insight into the brands and plans for the future of the internationally certified company with products in over 20 regional and international markets. Top brand at sports would be Shirley. In the local side, our biggest brands will be our crackers. Um, all of us have grown up on crackers. You know, your Eclipse, your Soda Bakes, your new entrants, you know, the ladies love the Invita. Um, and seeing more and more young men going over to the Invita brand. Um, our Troy Graham brand that we launched recently has been doing very well also. And we've heard the cries of persons in terms of um, maybe looking at some healthier options. And, and as I said, we're bringing something in, in, in the pipeline for that. Mr. Roach says the company is a foreign exchange earner and he supports the call for front of package labels. The growth of the company has come significantly from our export market. Right? Um, exports continue to do well for us and as a result of, of our growth in export, we are able to bring foreign exchange currency into Barbados. Uh, and I think that one, we, we represent one of those companies that, that do that in a positive way. Right? Uh, from the packaging label, I, I believe that the, the approach by the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of, of Finance, the government is starting recognizing the challenges that we have surrounding NCDs, are, are looking to make the best decisions for the community of Barbados. And I think any business entity, including ourselves, support those initiatives. Trevor Thorpe for the Business Report. There's a call for businesses in the tourism sector to adopt more water-efficient practices. Independent Senator Christopher Maynard made the point during his contribution to Senate debate on the Water Authority Amendment Bill 2023. I believe, and I might be wrong, that in the tourism sector, water use is not the most efficient. I will not comment, sir, on whether the users of the water pay for it or not. But I believe the government needs to connect all its revenue. And if I pay mine, all those who use should pay theirs. Well, that's our news for tonight. Thanks for tuning in. Good night.